All right, so something cool here is with Terry Leroy of Leroy the 13th. How you doing, man? Doing great, Ramsey. How you doing today? Good, man. Excited to have you on. I see you got a lot of stuff going on there, and I'm, I'm excited to talk about it all. Let's uh, let's dive right in and we'll talk about this deal cover that you did, man. Oh, sure. Absolutely. It was an amazing job that you did there, dude. You really did them justice. Wow, thank you. Thank you. That's, uh, that's a tall order. You know, if I can come somewhere within that wheelhouse a little bit. You know, Ronnie's a huge inspiration for me. Uh, one of my the, you know, great rock heroes and singing influences for me. So I, uh, I was just uh, honored to be able to do it. And then of course, have all these fantastic musicians play along, you know, and add their, add their talents to it. It, it's, it was just, couldn't ask for anything better. Now, it was quite the little super group you that did this song here. How did you guys all get together? Yeah, so that was uh, courtesy of David Bendeth, our producer. So David knows all these guys. Uh, actually, Aaron Pauley of Mice and Men, he, he and I and David were doing some co-writes before this. So I had a relationship with Aaron. But when we decided to do the Dio cover, uh, David said, hey, I got this really great guitar player out of Detroit. I've been talking to you about Will Hunt. And that was actually gonna be the original lineup. But then when, when Troy heard that Will was doing this and those guys obviously talked because they're in Evanescence, he was like, hey dude, he's like, you should check this out, man. I'm doing this, this deal thing. And then the next thing you know, Troy's in it. And I mean, he's, he, does the, he does the lead in the center. So it's bookended by Sammy's at the beginning with that little shred intro. Right. Then the main primary solo, that's Troy. And then at the end, it's a trade-off between both of them. That's awesome, man. It was such, you know, you guys did fantastic. It was so cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it, it's crazy to think that Dio is one of those timeless artists that are going to be there forever. You know what I mean? He's an icon, so to, and everyone still to this day loves him. It's so cool to hear his music being carried on. Well. Absolutely. It's, you know, it's great artistry. He's one of the greats for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an easy choice to pick that song too, because it was the namesake of the, the Cancer Foundation. Right. 100% of the proceeds from the song, however that comes in, however the revenue comes in, streaming, downloads, whatever, we send it back to Stand Up and Shout. And I also love that song because of the speed of it. And uh, right. it's got the, and the message of empowerment. Yeah, you know, stand, stand up and take charge of your own destiny. So yeah, it's a it's a good one. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it's crazy to think that one of the icons out there that they still have tribute bands to him that are made up of celebrities. You know what I mean? Last in line and uh, yeah, Vivian Campbell. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you always see you always see Ripper getting up there for in some configuration singing some Dio songs or Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool, man. It is. So what else is going on with you? I, I know you're doing um, the the Granny Four Barrel. You guys just did a uh, uh, recent release there, which was amazing. I love the whole transformation that you do, you know what I'm saying, to uh, getting the character and the, the whole oh, thanks. everything about it, you know? I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, so it's been, a, I think, uh, four or five weeks, The Art of Deception. Yep. It's a Granny Four Barrel song. And uh, that's been doing pretty good. So we put that out there. I'm actually back in recording mode with Will and a couple other folks. Uh, so we're gonna you're gonna hear another another cover that you would not expect from us. And then there's a and then there's another cover coming after that. I will say, I'll tell you the bands, but I won't tell you the songs. Okay. okay. Uh, so we're gonna do we're gonna be doing a rainbow cover. All right. And then we're gonna be doing a, a journey cover. Really? Oh yeah. That's gonna be yeah. awesome. Yep, gonna gonna beef it up, and uh, I mean, Journey. Well, there's another singer right there. I mean, Steve Perry. I mean, how are you gonna, you know, how are you gonna top that guy? I mean, he's just he's one of the greats. So I love to uh, uh, love to be able to pay tribute to to artists like that. For sure. I mean, it's it's gotta be fun doing covers though too. I mean, obviously, when you're an original artist and you know you have your own music, it's just to branch out and you know do stuff that you love. It's great. It's like uh, you've probably been to some band rehearsals before and you know how those things go. It turns into a big jam fest. You, know, you start out 
with one goal, but then by the end of the night, you know, your one hour band practice turned into six hours and you're playing, you know, every cover known to man. <laughs> Cause it's just, it's just a lot of fun and you're right. And, and I, I love doing it, but, but we also are going to be working on some original material too for Leroy 13. Awesome. Yeah. You know what it is? I, I think that this pandemic and the lockdown and everything has been a, a blessing in disguise for artists because it's given you guys a lot of time to go ahead and write music that you'd never have the chance to because you'd be so busy playing on the road and stuff, you know? It's true. That's that's exactly right. I mean, I've spent so much time just writing and, well, creating the, you know, the, that cool collaboration of Leroy 13. That wouldn't have happened. Right. Had it not been for the pandemic, we all would have been touring. Evanescence would have been out, Mice and Mount, all these guys would have been doing their thing, and I probably never would have met up with them. Not, not in this capacity. Well, I mean, it's great that you guys did get together because it sounds like you guys made yourself, you know, some friendships and some bonds there for you guys to continue and do more tracks. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this, the next two songs are going to have new lineups. Oh, it's still going to be, yeah, it's going to be myself and Will, but then there will be some other surprise musicians that you know very well. That's awesome, man. That's yeah, yeah, it's exciting. It's it's a lot of fun, and these guys are all like, you know, you give them a call, and and they're like, yeah, dude, I'm down. Then just gonna have some fun with it. Just For keep sure. hanging out some covers. Maybe it'll just be like a like an all star cover band or something. Yeah, man. Yeah, that'd, yeah. that'd be amazing. Like uh, me first in the Gimme Gimmies when I used to play the Warp Tour. That's all they did was uh. You know, no effects, and all those guys got all together, and they just played cover songs, and that's what they turned themselves into. Heck yeah, heck yeah. So, how do you go ahead with the with the other ones? How did you decide to pick the songs? Oh well, that was easy for me. I just, uh, I, I mean, in a way, it's a selfish motive uh, because I just love those songs. I just sing them for my own personal personal enjoyment. So when I drive around in my Jeep. Uh, basically every night I get in and I start firing up some some old Sabbath or some Dio or some Rainbow or some Journey or I mean I'll sing anything from you know, Blondie to the Cranberries whatever like I just like I just like to sing good songs but the songs that I've been picking for this aside from the Dio song which was you know it had it had the charity thing wrapped around it as well and right. we were we were going to be playing some charity events for Ride for Ronnie, but it got canceled during the pandemic. Uh -huh. So that, you know, that had its own like reason that that was going to happen. But these other songs, I just sing them all the time and I enjoy them. And I was like, well, why not just do a cover of them? I, if people like it, great, but I want to do it for my own personal enjoyment and to get to play with these other musicians and just have a good time. It's just, I love music. So why not? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Now, with you doing the original songs that you said you're planning on writing, how do you uh, separate that from, from, from your Grammy project? It's, it's kind of one in the same. I, I think that even though Granny is like this shock rock type of a band, right, right. it still translates a serious song like, well, The Art of Deception. Mm -hmm. uh, and had you ever, have you ever seen the band live? Have you seen Granny Forbear live? No, I never got an opportunity. Okay, well, when you when you get a chance to, when we come back out, you, I, I got to get you to a show because it's pretty outrageous. It's very theatrical and uh, and it's it's like a I don't know, it's like a psycho circus, <laughs> but but it's really heavy. And right. It's, it's musically legit. I've got some great players, and uh, these guys are you know they're they're just world class. And so we would we would play a few covers here and there too. In fact, that's how Wendy Dio saw us because we played Stand Up and Shout as Granny Four Barrel at the Whiskey. Oh, wow. And that's how she got to see us. That's so really that's cool. how that, Yeah, that's how that whole thing started. Um, but uh, yeah, it's really, I think I haven't really separated the two. Like, oh, Granny should sing about this and Leroy 13 should sing about this. Uh, I guess the more songs that we have, it might be easier to just kind of dissect them and go, you know what, this kind of fits this format a little bit better. But I, right now it's like, hey, that's a great song for this band. Let's put it out. But we, we were able to attack a more serious tone in the art of deception, something that we hadn't done in Granny Four Barrel before. So, yeah. 
Now, when you turn yourself in, into granny, I mean, is it, is it a process? I mean, I, I've spoken to some bands where they, you know, like uh, Kissing Candace goes the Aunt Donna, and she's, you know, so when you put it on, you totally just change yourself right before you get on stage. Is that the same thing, kind of like you? Absolutely, absolutely. Put that on, and all of a sudden, what what would a crazy old witch like woman who's fronting a metal band act like <laughs> right, right. It, yeah and that's that's what i do it's like okay she's like i don't know become possessed by the spirit of a crazy witch <laughs> metal a metal witch right right yeah now you know not only do i do i love the the whole setup there the videos are amazing but you have so many opportunities to go with that character i mean i'd love to see it turned into like a movie or a series or something you know oh it would be great i mean it's horror based for sure so granny Forbarrow comes from uh, great horror movies like if you've never seen burnt offerings it's a 70s horror flick with karen black oliver reed and i think one of betty davis's last films it's got burgess meredith in it Right, right. It, it's like my absolute favorite horror movie of all and it's based on a basically a possessed house this is pre-amityville horror so this is like you know in the 70s right, right, right. and uh basically this family takes they they watch the house they get they get an opportunity to watch this grand estate for the summer and they get a really good bargain on it there's only one catch the catch is you can watch our house but you got to take care of our elderly mother who lives up in the attic and she's no problem at all. And you can imagine where <laughs> you can imagine where this goes because no one ever gets to see the old woman upstairs except for the, the mother. Right. And then she stops the family from going up there. No, 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 I got this. And she starts getting weird. And all of a sudden I won't spoil it for you, but shit comes unhinged and there's some scary ass moments in there. So granny's got that. She's also got a Norman Bates, you know, kind of thread through it. So it's, yeah, it's uh, creepy. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, I, I love the whole character. And, you know, the, I, I love hearing the backstory now, how you came up with it, though. That's super cool. You know, I always enjoy theatrics when you go to a show. Don't get me wrong. Your talent is amazing. Your songs speak for themselves. But it's, you know, it sounds like it's a show to see. It's a show to see. It's fun. Try to give something extra. I always, you know, I love the the grand those bands from the 80s, some of those huge, you know, theatrical bands, they just had a look, they had a vibe. You were transformed when you went to see those bands. Uh, and I'm not, you know, putting down any musicians for dressing the way that they dress. But me personally, I, I like to see somebody put some effort into I want to I want to be transformed. I want to go like when I go see Judas Priest, I'm like, hell yeah. When I see Iron Maiden, I'm blown away right you know it's like the, the great bands of the past and there's there's something to be said for it's entertainment and it's a you know we're transforming the audience for the evening we're going to take you away from your the problems of the world in your life and for 90 minutes or two hours here it is so i like that you know, and word travels around when they hear that you know not only is it an amazing concert but it's a show it's something to see more people go and check that kind of things out you know yeah, well, hopefully more and more will, but I can't wait to see you there. We'll have some fun. Yeah, man, I'm excited. <laughs> hopefully the world opens up and we get to start actually doing yeah. some stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, wow, we've got 20, 2021's already halfway burned up. So we're already looking at, already looking at 2022. <laughs> Where are you located at? Upstate New York. Same here. So we, I know oh, you're- wait, wait, where are you at? I'm in, I'm in Buffalo, actually, so. That's okay, yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm near Syracuse. Yeah, so, I mean, I feel your pain about, you know. <laughs> yeah. Crazy here, you know, I mean, the 20% capacity we have on shelves and stuff, it's just, it's a nightmare, you know. I know. On an artist standpoint, too, it's just got to be more frustrating because you see these other states and they're letting you do shows and things like that, and you're just like, man, do I, do I want to travel down to Florida or Texas or whatever to be able, you know what I mean, is it? Is it even worthwhile to make a trip like that just to do a few shows? Yeah, yeah. Well, I hear you, but uh, it's coming soon. We're all chomping at the bit. Yeah, man, for sure. Now, I understand you do some some artwork too, is that right? Well, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I do. I'm not like an artist per se, like, well, with the drawing you have up there in the corner, of <laughs> that's, uh, you know, that's about the extent of my drawing artwork. But I, I own a, a body jewelry manufacturing company that I've had for the last 25 years. It's called Leroy. It's just my last name. It's not Leroy 13. It's just Leroy. Right. And um, yeah, that's a great company. So I'm a, I'm a jeweler. I started out as a goldsmith. And um, mm -hmm. I've been, I mean, that's how I have supported myself. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been a musician out of high school. That's been my first love. But over the years, yeah, the money gets a little sparse sometimes. And yeah. I had to find yeah. another way of making a living. So I got into the body mod industry. And um, it's, a, it's a great business. We've had, wow, we've had uh, some of our employees have been with me for 25 years. Awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, just look us up. We got an Instagram uh, got a Facebook and pretty much any tattoo and piercing shop you go in across the world, just they probably have our jewelry in it. So that's got to be really cool too. I mean, when you go to one of your shows and you spot a piece on somebody, you're like, hey, that's that's me. That's that's my. Stuff. Well, yeah. The great part is too. So what happened was uh, last tour, literally every town we go to, there is at least one shop that is a customer of ours. So I, you know, pop in an Uber do a sound check and I'm like, Oh, I got to kill some time. Pop in an Uber, go over and Hey dude, come to the show tonight. Right. It's great. Yeah. It's a great network. It's, and it's all, it's all intertwined. It's I'm a musician. I'm a jeweler. I'm in the body mod industry. It's all like, it all fits together. For sure, man. I mean, it sounds like you're a talented artist and you're just breaking free in, in, in different ways. Oh, thanks man. Yeah. I mean, it's just art. I grew up in a really creative family. My mom is a, Oh, she's a sculptor. She's a painter. She's an all around artist, crafty person. She's a seamstress. She's like, just say, hey, Marilyn. Well, you know, what's funny. This is really funny. As I'm looking at your wall and I see Marilyn Manson, mm -hmm. uh, my mother's maiden name is Munson. But it's hilarious because I call her Marilyn Munson. <laughs> <laughs> she's my shock rock mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, she's yeah. Well, that's that's how I grew up. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. Now the thing is, like, I enjoy this little thing right here, this stuff, and I I really think that you have an opportunity to go ahead and people get off on that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Well, I'm glad you said that because uh, you know, there's been a couple times when I've sketched those things out at shows and put them at the merch booth, and people love them when we sign them. Yeah, they're called they're called sick figures. I've got a little, what's that? I, I can see it going as a full comic series. You know what I mean? There's a lot of potential in, in there. I think you're right. What I need is an animator. Wow. And uh, I've started thinking about that lately because after, actually after I talked to your son, uh, it made me start thinking a little bit more about this. And I was like, yeah, if I could find an animator and animate those little stick figures, uh, it'd be a riot. They're in a way like the, twisted little characters in the tool videos right right those are actually three-dimensional claymations mm -hmm. whereas these are like uh two-dimensional drawings but yeah for sure. fun i mean yeah. there's definitely a lot of potential there i mean you could yeah, yeah. a side story for granny or something going on in there and you know write a whole little book you know hey that's how she started there she is right there right in that picture yeah for sure. that's her that's she started out as a cartoon character years ago <laughs> So is there any chance of you doing any shows this year? I mean, I, I know we were just talking about how rough it is in the States. Are you planning on traveling or doing anything like that? Well, I'm ready to go. So we've been discussing it with management. We've been talking to agents, you know, other managers, just, just folks in the industry trying to find out what, what we can jump on, what makes sense. And uh, as soon as we can, we will. I mean, it's got to be crazy. Having you got to have the itch to do it, and then doing something that you love, and being told, "Hey, you're on a permanent break for right now until we say okay." Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's that's it. So in the meantime, we just keep creating. Uh, you know, we do these covers, keep writing, keep doing interviews, and uh, keep the flame alive that way. Now, for those that are watching, they want to follow up. They want to check out these cover tunes. They want to see the grain stuff. They want to, uh, you know, get some of your jewelry. Where do they go? Where do they 
go for everything? So, well, first, the easiest way would be just Google any one of the names, Granny Four Barrel, that's uh, Granny, and then the number four, and then barrel, like the barrel of a gun, or a four barrel carburetor. Right. Uh, Leroy 13, that's L-E-R-O-I, and that's my last name. And then Leroy 13, the band is, is uh, with, spelled with the last name and the Roman numerals, X and three I's. Uh, yeah, just Google it, Instagram, Facebook, Websites, it's all there. Spotify. Awesome, man. Now, what kind of time frame are we looking at before we get to hear these uh, the new covers and maybe some original stuff from? I'd say less than a month. I've already got. Uh, I'll give you a little. All right, I'll give you a little. I'll give you a little sneak peek at what's happening. So, <laughs> the first lineup is going to be it's going to be Dana Strum. It's going to be Will Hunt, myself. And Steph Burns. And oh, if you don't know who you know Steph Burns? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's incredible. Uh, world class guitar player. He's known internationally. And he is he's he's amazing. So we've already got our drums, scratch vocal, and guitars done. Actually, Dana, sometime this week, is gonna lay down some bass. And uh, that's all I'll tell you for now, but it's gonna be, I don't know, three weeks tops. Awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have something. And then there's another song coming after that. And uh, we're going to try to space them out like every four or six weeks. We're just going to keep banging them out. Well, I mean, that, right now, I think that's the smartest thing to do because it keeps the fans wanting more. I mean, right now, you just told me about this, and that's going to be all on my mind for the next month until it finally. Uh, okay. Out. You're the only one I've told that to. Awesome, man. Well, I'd let you in on more. It, well, because it's actually. Before it was like, hey, we're talking about this. And I don't like to say anything until it's like, okay, this is actually happening. But this is actually like, we're in, we're literally, I just finished up a scratch vocal track last night. Will finished the drums for two tracks, goes back over to Dana. Steph did his stuff. So I can tell you that it's coming. Awesome. But I won't, I won't tell you the song though. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you, you got me, you got my mind racing. So I'm pretty excited, you know? Awesome. Well, like I said, I'm, I loved everything that you're doing so far. Uh, hopefully one day I get to see you live, man, you know. Oh, I'm sure of it, Ramsey. I'm sure of it. I mean, you're you're down the street. So <laughs> real, literally, you're only I'm, I'm actually in a Swigo, uh, not Syracuse. I just usually use that as a reference point, but I'm in a Swigo. So we're 180 miles from you guys. Yeah. So, and, uh, you know, hopefully you'll be, uh, come to. Either, either way, either I come out closer to you, you come out, you know, you're doing a show. Absolutely. Show. Well, yeah, if you're up this way too, stop in sometime and I'll show you the, uh, I'll show you the little jewelry factory we have. We got like 40 employees. Really? Yeah, we're, we've been, uh, we're just, I just came, in fact, I just came from there to do this interview. <laughs> Definitely more than a little factory than you get, you know? It yeah, like it start it started out with me. It was just me, then it was me and my brother, and it was me and my brother and my friend. And uh, 25 years later, it's it's what it is. That's awesome, man. And congratulations. It had been so cool to watch that grow to what it is now. Thank you. Well, I have music to thank for that business because at the time, uh, I was doing some work at a jewelry store and I had a band called Lead Christine. Okay. It was a pretty cool band. It was uh, it's kind of like a mixture of, it, it had some 90s vibe to it. It was like a Pantera meets Tool meets Helmet kind of thing. Right. And uh, I ended up just talking to my fellow musician friends. This is when body piercing was young in the early 90s. I mean, it's been around for a while. It's been around since the 70s and even before. I mean, you can go all the way back to ancient times, body piercing, different cultures do it. But um, yeah, I had uh, just some musician friends were starting to sport some body piercings and they were like, hey, Terry, you know, at a show, they're like, oh, dude, you're, you're, you're a jeweler. You're like a jewelry guy. How do you, you know, could you make me one of these? And could you do this? And that's, that's how it started. So I was like, oh yeah, body piercing jewelry. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm used to doing like engagement rings and like traditional jewelry, but body jewelry intrigued me. And I was already in the world, in that world with my friends and you know, tattoos and the whole thing. So it, that's how it started. Um, but the word started to spread. I, I sold a little handfuls of jewelry, a few little captive bead rings and things like that to some local shops. 
And the subculture of tattooing and body mod, everybody knows everybody else. All the piercers and tattoo artists, they guest spot at each other's shops. And word just started to spread. You know, the next year we had a few more accounts and then a few more. And then fast forward to 25 years later, it's an industry that like basically was being created at the time that we started doing it. So it, I have music, there. I'm back to music again, because that's how it started. <laughs> yeah, so you're one of the godfathers of the, uh, the body body industry. Though. Yeah, dude, absolutely. That's awesome, man. Well, I thank you so much for your time. I, I, I love your work. And uh, now my mind's gonna race for a month until I get to hear that uh, the new track of this. We'll let you know, I'll have Chip give you a shout, or I'll, I'll let you know too, I've got your contact info. and. Thanks again for uh, the interview. I really appreciate oh, thank you for taking the time and speaking with me, man. Like I said, I really enjoyed talking to you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for getting the word out. Yeah, for sure, man. Definitely. You take care of yourself. I'll talk to you soon.